everybody. Good Tuesday evening to you. It is 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. This is the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. It's kind of our daily deep dive, if you will, into our local weather. We talk about some national stories sometimes as well, some climate topics, some other sciencey topics. And if you're a new viewer to these uh, videos, I've picked up some uh, a fair amount of new viewers, it seems like, over the last couple of months. Just a reminder, I'm based in Youngstown, Ohio, so this video tends to focus on Northeast Ohio and Western PA, but as uh, is appropriate, we'll uh, occasionally branch out and talk about uh, some regional and national weather stories. Sometimes I get some questions. Hey, what about uh, the weather for Minneapolis or <laughs> Albuquerque or, you know, name the city and, and, you know, truth be told, I'm not looking super closely at those kinds of cities unless there is a pretty remarkable weather event. But again, we, we try to touch on some big national weather stories sometimes, but our focus is usually on the Youngstown, Ohio, Ohio area, easy for me to say, where it was a gloomy start to the day, this uh, time lapse. Yeah, let's uh, try that again. This time lapse starting right here <clears throat> shows the uh, clouds that we had this morning, some mist and drizzle. And then as we got into the afternoon, as expected, the sky brightened and as expected, temperatures rebounded very nicely. We got into the lower 50s this afternoon. Hey, 53. It's almost 20 degrees above average. 34 is our average high here in the dead of winter in the middle of January. For the month, 9.6 degrees above the average. Now, it was just three years ago, we had even warmer January temperatures through the first 17 days of the month back in 2020. It's even a little bit warmer than the same stretch this year. But we've only had two below average high temperatures thus far this January, this year. They've both been on Saturdays. But otherwise, of course, warmth has ruled the roost. That's going to change finally as we head towards the end of the week and into the weekend. Nothing harsh, but a pattern change is coming up. We did have a little secondary disturbance pivot through late this afternoon with a couple of sprinkles and showers. Might be a uh, rain shower or a sprinkle here and there for tonight. Just a lot of clouds for the majority of the night. Our next weather maker across our area is out here across uh, parts of Texas and Oklahoma, Kansas, and along the front range of the Rockies. This is what tracks our way tomorrow night heading into the day on Thursday. And that system will bring us Kind of a similar sequence of events to the ones uh, to the one I should say that we just had last night into today. But in the meantime, we're in between systems on Wednesday, just kind of a ho hum day. Not as warm as today, but still above the average. 34 again is the average. We'll do about 41 tomorrow under that blanket of clouds. And much like last night, the rain pushes in after sunset tomorrow evening into the overnight. It's going to rain for several hours. But then just like today, I think the sun is going to try to break out as we go through the afternoon. Assuming this does happen. We're in record territory. The record Thursday, I looked it up, it is 61. That's probably out of reach. Um, but could we get into the mid-50s, even a few degrees higher than today? You betcha. Um, so Thursday afternoon, really nice, and probably the last time we're going to see a temperature like that for a while. This is a stronger front that comes through then Thursday night, and behind it will be cold enough for snow flurries on Friday, and just kind of a classic midwinter day in eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, on Friday with no sunshine, Occasionally some flurries and a gusty breeze as well. Those flurries will try to stick around into Friday night, Saturday morning as well. In the meantime, a uh, pretty good slug of rain once again coming our way uh, for tomorrow night. Maybe even amounts will be a little bit higher than we had last night. Generally somewhere between a half an inch and an inch seems pretty likely. NAM is kind of an outlier here. Uh, most of our modeling is under one inch, but a pretty good drink of water. All right, some... Weather model intrigue then for the end of the weekend. Yesterday, we didn't see much support for some sort of impactful system on most of our models for the end of the weekend. That changed today with several models kind of joining in on the idea that there's going to be an area of low pressure approaching from the west on Sunday. Let's pause this. Let's go back and pause this Sunday afternoon. This is one model. This is the European model. And we're not going to show you all of the models that uh, we look at because there's a lot of them. Um, but this is one of our major ones. And taken literally, it would suggest we get maybe some impactful snow Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. Maybe enough to coat the ground. Maybe enough to cause some slick spots. A huge snowstorm, something like we had a year ago today where we got a foot. No. But uh, the European would, taken literally, suggest that we have a snowy second half of Sunday on tap. Other modeling has a system, but the details are different. The GFS is a little bit more of a westerly cutter like this and brings in enough warm air that it rains Sunday afternoon. And the snow is not much of a big deal. So this is something that uh, has uh, gotten our attention today, and we'll continue to uh, keep an eye on the model trends, of course, in the coming days. May not be much of a big deal. Maybe our best chance for some accumulating snow that we've had so far this year in, in most spots. And then we'll quiet things down by Monday evening, Monday night, it looks like. And then maybe the middle of next week we could see 
uh, more wintry weather entry. Here's a look at uh, just, for example, where some of our models are. I just showed you the European for this uh, Sunday system. No surprise. It shows a few inches. Other models trying to bring in rain. Maybe the low pressure system is too far to the south and east. Other models are not as impressed by the chances for some accumulating snow at the end of the weekend. But this is a more active pattern. It's a colder pattern, not harshly cold, but it's a colder pattern. And I think it'll be a more active pattern as well. So maybe towards the middle of next week, we'll have another opportunity for some wintry weather. And there could be more opportunities in late January and early February beyond the middle of next week. So the times they are a change in, are we gonna go into some sort of deep freeze for the time being, it does not look very likely. We talked some on last evening's video about February's forecast, maybe depending on what's going on in the stratosphere, believe it or not. Um, if we get something weird going on in the stratosphere up over the pole, that might dislodge a big chunk of cold air in February. But if that doesn't happen, uh, February may see a reversion to the kind of pattern that we've been in for a lot of January. So that's something that remains to be seen. Low confidence right now on the long, long range forecast for the final third of winter. Thank you for watching tonight. Check out Wednesday's edition of Weather for Weather Geeks in all the usual places, including on YouTube.